in the previous lecture we have started to discuss the condition for a transformation to be canonical and in this regard you have seen in very detail the condition which is known as exact differential condition to show that a given transformation is canonical now uh, in this lecture our aim is to illustrate that very uh, idea to solve some numerical problems so definitely a there will be a transformation equation given in your problem and you have to show that the given transformation is canonical so if you will use the condition for exact differential then you can easily show that the given transformation is canonical and for that i have taken here two important examples you can see i have mentioned those two examples here the first one is uh, is like this capital q equal to ln 1 over q sin p and capital p equal to q cot p and then we have to show that this transformation is a canonical transformation and the in another uh, problem we have we are given here a small p equal to 1 over q and a small q equal to p q square and we have again to show that this transformation is also canonical and in this problem you have uh, to also find what will be the generating function f so let us uh, solve this problem uh, first of all we are going to solve the first problem which uh, in which the transformation equations are given like this capital q is equal to ln sin p over q and capital p equal to a uh, small q cot p where p is also a small now you know uh, if the given transformation will be canonical then definitely this expression p dq minus this capital p dq uh, should be an exact differential so let us try to show that this expression is an exact differential so you can simplify it p dq minus p dq equal to what i have written here uh, at in the same uh, step uh, p dq and capital p you can see this is q cot p so i have written here q cot p times differential of q and q is ln sin p by q so this is d ln sin p by q now let us simplify it you can see this is simply p dq uh, let us uh, write by taking some space here because after calculation more space will be needed so this will be equal to p dq and minus q cot p now let us find the differential of ln sin p by q you have to use the formula for the differential of ln x so uh, definitely you have an idea of this formula and using that formula you can easily find what will be the differential of ln sin p by q you can see that this will be equal to 1 over sin p over q and then differential of sin p over q and this can be written as p dq minus now here 1 over sin p by q so this q will be now in the numerator and that q and this q will now become q square so this is q square cot p and uh, divided by sin p and now we have to evaluate differential of sin p by q so you can say that this differential can be evaluated by using the formula of differential of ratio of two functions that is du by b so using the formula for d 
u by v, what will be your result? You can see this is in fact uh, v and at the place of v there is q, q and differential of sin p. Sin p's differential will be what? That will be cos p dp and minus now we write in formula uh, u so you have to write sin p and differential of q this is dq and whole divided by v square and v square means q square here so this is q square this is q square now you can see this q square and this q square will cancel out and our result is p dq minus cot p and now uh, divide this uh, expression inside the square bracket by this sign p you can see so this will be what this will be in the first term cos p by sin p will be cot p so this is q cot p dp and minus in second term sin p will cancel out so only dq remains here so this is dq now let us multiply the terms inside the square bracket by this cot p and after multiplying this you can see what will be this this is p dq minus q cot a square p dp and plus cot p dq cot p dq cot p dq now use the formula for cot square p you know from trigonometry this cot square p can be written as cosec square p minus 1 so what will be your result you can see that this p dq minus p dq equal to what see here in fact uh, in this first term you can see there is p dq and in the last term there is cot p dq so you can take dq as a common factor in the first and last term and this second term can be written as minus q times cosec square p minus 1 dp and plus now we associate the first and last term so this will be p plus cot p dq dq now if you will introduce this minus inside the bracket then what will be your result this is q times 1 minus cosec square p dp and plus p plus cot p dq p plus cot p dq now you can see that this expression can be written as differential of q times p plus cot p you can check it when you will find the differential of the product of q and p plus d uh, p plus cot p you will get this expression you can check it so you can see since this uh, expression p dq minus p dq is equal to differential of q times p plus cot p so you can say this is just an exact differential and exact differential and uh, as you know if this expression is equal to an exact differential the given transformation will be canonical so you can conclude uh, so the given transformation given transformation is canonical
this is canonical now let us try to solve the second problem by the same technique and what is your second problem you can see here the transformation equation is p equal to 1 over q and q equal to p q square so let us first of all write this transformation the given transformation given transformation what is the given transformation you have seen that this is p equal to 1 over q and q equal to p q square q equal to p q square p q square now we will again show that this transformation will be canonical by using the concept of uh, uh, exact differential so again we will find the same expression so now you can see what will be the value of p d q minus capital p d q what will be this you can see p p is equal to 1 over q here you can see so instead of p now we write 1 over q and d q so d q means differential of this q and this q is actually a product of p and q square so let us find the differential of this uh, p q square and what will be differential of p q square we will follow the rule of uh, differentiation of product of two function and so you can see this will be equal to 2 p q d q and plus q square d p q square d p and uh, the remaining term is minus p d q now when you will multiply by this 1 over q to the terms inside the square bracket in first term q will cancel out in second term one of the q will cancel out so your result will be 2p dq and plus q dp and minus p dq so see here 2p dq a minus p dq this will be simply p dq so you can write this implies p dq minus capital p d capital q this will be equal to what you can see this is p dq plus q dp p dq plus q dp and you can easily see that this expression can be written as differential of p times q and so this is actually equal to df where f is the generating function and this is an exact differential exact differential so we have uh, we can see that this expression p dq minus p dq is an exact differential so according to the exact differential condition the given transformation is canonical thus the given transformation given transformation is canonical now in the second part of our problem we have to find the generating function f so you can see here since we have obtained that this df is equal to d of pq so it means the generating function f is equal to pq but as you know that uh, in a generating function uh, the coordinates of any one set of coordinates cannot exist 
In fact, when uh, we have discussed the generating function, then we have seen that in the expression of generating function, there should be coordinates from the uh, from both the old and new uh, uh, set of coordinate system. So, you can say that the given uh, transformation is although not canonical and generating function is PQ, but this PQ is not the appropriate form. Why not appropriate form? As I have told you that the as you know that the generating function should involve both set of coordinates. So, one of the coordinates in this expression for f must be changed in such a manner that the coordinate of old set of coordinate should exist here. So, as the generating function generating function should involve should involve both sets of coordinates both sets of coordinates so, as a, in our problem, it is given that this P Q H equal to what? Sorry, not P Q, but P Q square is equal to a small q. P Q square equal to a small q. So, what will be this P Q? You can see this will be a small q uh, divided by capital Q. So, now in a stead of this uh, PQ, you can write uh, a small q by capital Q. So, therefore, you can say that the generating function F will be what? This will be a small q by capital Q. And this will be your right form of the generating function because you can see in the expression of this generating function, this small q is the coordinate of old coordinate system and capital Q is the coordinate of the new coordinate system. So, this is actually the proper form of the generating function. So, you can see how easily we can solve the numerical problems based on, the, on this concept. But, uh, solution is very simple very uh, you can solve uh, the problem in very short step but these problems you can see is very important uh, these problems are actually asked in several examinations uh, invariably you can see